So first of all, I would like to thank you for inviting me here. And before I get to the business, I would like to tell you some stories. There is a large field of mathematical physics which studies random operators, random matrices, random Schrodinger operators, etc. The interest is the, uh, in their typical properties, such as the spectrum, the eigenfunctions, and the eigenvalues. The problems of that type are usually formulated in a form of calculate an expectation of some random variable. This expectation is some integral with respect to a measure that lives on some multidimensional space. The integrand function usually is a quite complicated function and therefore the task of this computation is quite hard. There is a general method that called supersymmetric method which tells us how to rewrite this integral in a different way. The measure usually stops being positive measure, but this integral in some sense becomes more amenable to analysis. The supersymmetric method goes back to Berezin in 60s, 70s and was uh, developed further in, uh, in the works of uh, Wegner and Effetto. Supersymmetric formula is widely applied in physical literature, but only a fraction of these applications have been put on mathematical rigorous basis. In the last dozen years, however, uh, uh, it again became a very active field of study in mathematical community. And the application found during that years include uh, an analysis of the density of states for a three-dimensional random band matrix model in the work of 2002 by dissertatory Pinson and Spencer, the study of uh, mixed moments of characteristic polynomials of a class of one-dimensional random band matrices in the recent work of Tanya Sherbina and others. I would like to tell you about one problem, which is a toy problem in the sense that it has a solution which doesn't use a supersymmetry, but supersymmetric solution seems more robust. The problem, as it says in the title, is the uh, approximate expansion of the density of <coughs> states of the Gaussian orthogonal ensemble, and now we'll tell you precisely what's the problem and where the supersymmetry comes into play. And before I forgot, this uh, work is an extension of work of Margarita de from 2004. So, we are interested in this work, we study uh, Gaussian orthogonal and Gaussian unicorn ensembles. Both are ensembles of n by n Hermitian random matrices. which are defined as follows. We define GOE as A plus A transpose, where A is the following matrix, one or square root of two N is just a normalization, and the entries are independent, identically distributed, real, standard, Gaussian variables. Two important properties of this ensemble are, first, that the entries are independent up to the symmetry constraint. And the second is that the distribution is invariant under orthogonal conjugation. The Gaussian unitary ensemble, about which you already uh, heard in yesterday's talks of Paul and today a little bit in the talk of Kevin, is defined in a similar way. GUE <coughs> is equal B plus B conjugate transpose, and now it's almost the same matrix except that the entries are complex. Now, uh, in particular, the diagonal entries of the unitary ensemble are, uh, are real, and the both properties hold except that now it's under uh, invariant under unitary conjugation. So, now let me define the second object from uh, from the title of my talk, which is the density of states. And the density of states is defined 
as an average density of eigenvalues at E. Wegner proved that uh, uh, the density of states converges weakly to the semicircle density, Wigner semis Wigner. semicircle density as the size of the matrix goes to infinity, uh, which is defined by 1 over pi square root of the positive part of 1 minus e square over 4. Now, for any fixed n, the density of states is the Wigner semicircle law up to the corrections. And uh, uh, the first correction being of order of 1 over n. This correction can actually be seen on numerical simulation. And here I printed, that was actually the hardest part of this talk to print that. You can see that these oscillations are precisely described by the corrections. Now, we give a new proof to the two following theorems. The first is that for the Gaussian unity ensemble, the density of states is the Wigner semicircle density minus minus 1 to the n divided by 4 pi square n Bigness semicircle density square times the oscillator term plus okay, here uh, plus O of n to the minus three halves, and this is for the absolute value of E smaller than two minus delta. And the implicit constant in the annotation depends only on delta. And the second theorem is that for the orthogonal ensemble, we have that the density of states is equal to the semicircle density minus 1 over 4 pi square n semicircle density plus O of n minus 3 halves once again for E smaller than 2 minus delta and the implicit constant in the annotation here also depends only on delta. As you can see in the orthogonal ensemble there is no oscillatory term at the correction of 1 over n it at, and indeed it appears only at the level of 1 over n square correction. Our analysis is based on a, a, on a saddle point analysis of an exact integral formulas for the density of states, which we derive using the supersymmetric formalism. But before I go to the technical details, let me tell you a bit about uh, previous works on this subject. In 2002, Kalish and Brock use supersymmetric formalism to derive, uh, to derive these formulas for GUE and GUE. They, they work, however, only on a physical level of reserves. In 2004, Margarita Di Sertori put a, a GUE part of their work on a rigorous basis. Our work is an extension of her work for the orthogonal ensemble and we also give a new proof uh, for the unity ensemble using a different supersymmetric approach. Now in 2005-2006, Forrester, Frankel, and Garoni uh, derived these formulas for GOE and GUE, but using different methods. And 
And in 2006, there was, yeah, and Forster extended these results to the general bet ensembles. So I will just write down that this is generalization. And now let me tell you. Yeah, exactly. This is the method of orthogonal polynomials. Now let me tell you two minutes about technical details. There is an elementary formula that connects the density of state and the resolvent operator, which is uh, true for any nice operator. And I will not get into what nice means. That the density of states equal to the limit when epsilon goes to 0 of 1 over pi n, imaginary part of the expectation of the trace of the inverse of e minus epsilon minus h, h being our operator. Uh, we derive, and using supersymmetric formalism, an exact integral formula for that creature, for the expectation of the trace. But first, uh, and I would like to show how, the ideas. So, I will start with two following formulas, which are true for any n by n matrices for which the right hand side of the expression that I will write is converges. So the first formula is that the inverse of the determinant times the mn element of the uh, inverse of the matrix equal to the integral of the exponent of minus from 1 to n, z bar j, a, j, k, z, k. This is the first formula. z bar m, z, n, from 1 to n, d, real part z, j, the imaginary part z, j, divided by pi. And now you can already see that the way that random variable enters on the right-hand side is much more explicit and much mu simpler than on the left-hand side. So, and therefore, to take an expectation now, it's much easier. However, on the left-hand side, we have this unwanted term, which is the inverse of the determinant, and we would like to get rid of that term. So what we do, we uh, introduce the following two sets of anti-commuting Grassmann variables, psi n and psi bar. And anti-commuting means that they obey psi i psi j plus psi j psi i equal to psi i bar psi j plus psi j psi i bar equal to psi i bar psi j bar plus psi j bar psi i bar equal to zero. That means anti-commuting. Now, the, there is an integral now defined by the following rules, that the integral of psi i d psi i equal to the integral of psi i bar d psi i bar equal to 1, and the integral of psi a of d psi i equal to the integral of d psi i bar equal to 0. And now we are ready to write a formula for the determinant, which is the following term formula. It's very similar to that, except that it's in Grassmann variables. That the determinant of A equal to the integral of the exponent of minus sum psi bar j a j k psi k, and here's the measure. And now, one last thing which I will write on the board is that if you multiply formulas 1 and 2 and substitute a equal to i e minus i epsilon minus h, we obtain the following formula for the mn element of the inverse. It's equal to i integral dz integral d psi exponent minus i sum z bar j e minus i epsilon minus h j k z k times z bar m z n times the exponent in Grassmann variables. 
minus i from 1 to n psi bar j e minus i epsilon minus h j k psi k. What I told you up until now, it's basics and well-known things. Actually, the whole work starts here. But you can see already here that, once again, the random variables on the right-hand side enter in a relatively simple way. I will not tell you about this work, but I will tell you what is the work. So first of all, about algebraic manipulations, I'm sorry, stay. We get rid of the Grassmann variables and then reduce the dimension of the integral from 2n to 2 in the case of the unitary ensemble and to 4 in the case of the orthogonal ensemble. Now n appears as a large parameter in the integrand. And then uh, 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 we perform large, we compute large n asymptotics using subtle point analysis of that integral and that then we obtain the result. Thank you very much.